Hello everyone, my name is Lisa Nichols and today I'm going to show you how to run a sample on a GC or a gas chromatograph. That's this very loud instrument in the back here. So let's start with how to prepare a sample. You want to take a very small GC vial and fill it with a solvent. At my college we tend to use methanol but you can use a lot of low boiling solvents like acetone. You fill it to the 1.5 milliliter mark on the GC vial. And then you normally add one drop of the sample that you want to analyze. Here I'm going to analyze gasoline. And GCs have to be run on very dilute samples, so really one drop is plenty. Uh, sometimes you'll feel like, oh, I'm not sure if I actually added a drop. You did, it's enough. Um, it's very, it has to be very dilute, and then the machine actually even dilutes it further. So here is our GEC instrument, and I first want to show you the inside. That coil that looks like a copper wire, very, very thin coil wrapped up, that's the GEC column. So that's a hollow tube filled with an absorbent, and uh, it's 30 meters long normally. Okay, so here I'm going to stick my diluted sample into the turnstile and then go to the computer. And I first just push on that arrow and I'm going to change the, the file name and here I'll just write gasoline. And then you tell the machine to go and that's it. It's working. So at my college, we have a turnstile where you can do multiple GCs back to back. Um, some colleges just have a manual uh, port where you would just take the syringe and actually inject it in just one at a time. Um, but what's really nice about these turnstiles is that we can have this motorized uh, robot arm that can like add your sample and um, you can have like 50 of them in a row and you can just tell the computer to do them and save the file and so that means that you wouldn't have to like stick around and wait for it to be done. The little robot is pretty fun to watch in person too. So first what's going to happen is it's going to pull up some of my sample with that needle. You see it? So it pulls up um, a little bit and then um, spills it out into a, a waste container and it does that twice and that's to rinse the needle in case there was you know, some left over from the previous run. And then it shoots it out a couple times trying to get rid of some air bubbles. And then it's going to pull up just a little bit, about one microliter of sample. There it is. And so that, that was just the injection. So now your small amount of sample is in the GC column, it's in the instrument, and it's starting to get pushed through that column with the carrier gas, which at my college is uh, helium. What next happens is um, then we have some clean solvent and the robot is going to um, clean that needle a couple times just to get it ready for the next run. And the robot arm comes and gets your sample, returns it back to the turnstile. Then on the computer, you'll notice that the time is going up and it is running. At my college, we have a mass spectrometer as our detector at the end of the GC. And if you have one of those, you'll get this comment that says override solvent delay and you want to do nothing. You can just ignore it and it'll go away or you could push no. So after it's run, you then we then use a different program to analyze it. So you find your file on the left and you double click on it. Here I'd run gasoline a couple times and here is my spectrum. Uh, the first thing that I'll do is I'll choose chromatogram integrate and the computer will find the integral under each of the peaks so that we can know how much is in each one. It also puts a number on there that marks the retention time. Next what you can do is you double click on a peak and then double click on the mass spectrum that it brings underneath it and you can use that to identify the peaks. And this only works if you have a mass spectrometer detector. Um, let me show you again on, on this other one. So you double click 
and then you double click on the graph underneath it and what happens is um, it asks the computer to match the mass spectrum to a database and um, it has tons and tons of very common uh, molecules in it and so then you can um, see which one is it is it a good match on and identify the signal um, lastly you can choose um, the percent report and be able to see like how much of each compound is there.